The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra by Benjamin Britten features each section of the orchestra in a soli context. Soli means the entire section. Solo refers to one player. When Britton wrote this, uh, it was for a documentary film, and it was in 1946. He obvious, obviously had the uh, assistance of bass players when writing this, because it's, it really explores the range of the bass in a way other pieces before this hadn't. For example, Carnival of the Animals. It has tremendous variations in tempo, a lot of string crossing, complicated string crossing, fast playing, covering the whole range of the bass. This piece is fraught with technical difficulties. When you start, each bar has a little crescendo in it of its own, plus there's a general crescendo that goes throughout the whole passage. The way I try to get this crescendo to appear is by accenting each third note of every bar. So, And that simulates a crescendo, whether it is or not, I'm not sure, but it sounds like one. Then over the course of this passage, you not only have to make a general crescendo, but you also have to make an acello rondo. So each downbeat comes sooner than the last. So if you start one, 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 one. Now, this last note has a sforzando on it. So you want to save your bow during the glissando, and the glissando should start right after two. So it's one, two, because all the bases together have to start that glissando at the same time. One, one, two, one, two. And if you save a lot of bow, you can really whack that note. The middle section, I like starting up bow, starting with my second finger, and the notes and fingering look like this. Three, four, The very last two bars of this line have a rollentando molto and a built-in retard the way the rhythm is written with a quarter note triplets. So you have and there's almost always a breath before that last D sharp which is under a fermata and has a big accent on it. Then the next passage starts back at the frog. So you end. Now you go back to the frog and back to the original tempo. 
one. So the softer you start, the easier it is to make that sound like a crescendo and then and so on. The fingering for this last gnarly passage here is one, one, two, four, one, one, two, which is a real tongue twister, when, especially when you're playing it fast. So you want to really build that fingering in. Then you're back to these repeated G's. Scale. Two. And getting this glissando. Save your bow. So you can nail that last G.